We are now going to talk about one of the most important of the data structures found in our data frames. A data fr frame is essentially a t like a table. We can actually construct a table like this using the two structures that we've already learned about. We can think of a data frame as being composed of columns and each of the columns is essentially a vector and can be treated as a vector. The column header is the name of the vector and the items in the column are the items in the vector in sequential order with the first item in the first row, second item in the second row, and so on. Then each of the columns in that vector can be connected with each other by creating each column as a list item. So the first column is the first list item, second column is the second list item, third column is the third list item, and so on. One way that we can make a data frame is to construct it in a manner similar to what I just described. First, we can create a vector for each one of the columns. As we create it, we can give each one of them a name. Then we can use the data.frame function to join together the three vectors into a data frame with the columns that are named according to the names of the three items that we have included as arguments of the data frame function. So let's go ahead and make a data frame as I showed in the slides. We'll create each one of the vectors one at a time and we can see that they are all showing up in my global environment. And now when I click on the data.frame command, it has created a data frame known as organism info. In a manner similar to the way I could view the contents of a list, I can also view the contents of a data frame simply by clicking on the data frame's name in the global environment and a new window will open up. Since a uh, data frame is essentially a table. It will be displayed to me in tabular form. So if I go into the global environment and click on the name of the vector, it creates a new pane, a, a new tab in the upper left pane showing me the results in table form. The syntax for referring to different parts of a data frame are as follows. Because the columns are essentially list items, we can refer to a column by using the dollar sign notation like we did with list. Put the name of the data frame, a dollar sign, and then the column. We can refer to individual cells by their row and column by putting them inside square brackets. So this is uh, kind of typical for different languages that have rows and columns. The row number is listed first, and then a comma, then the column number. We also have the option of referring to the column by name and the row by number. If we think of organism info dollar sign animal as a vector, then we can see that we're essentially using the same vector notation, that is putting the item number in square brackets but instead of having a simple name for the vector, we're referring to the vector by its column name. Let's try referring to different parts of the data frame. First of all, organism info dollar sign animal. That should give me the animal column, which is basically a vector and should list the items frog, spider, worm, and bee. And we see that it does indeed list those things. If we refer to a particular cell, we can refer to it as second row, first column. Second row, first column should give me arachnid. And I do get arachnid. If I want to refer by column name and position in column, I can use this syntax. So here I'm referring to the column named animal 
fourth item in that column, which would be the fourth row down from the top. So here's the animal column, fourth item from the top. That should give me B. If I run this line, I see that it does indeed give me B.